Hello, everyone. Uh, we want to welcome you to the to our uh, next uh, episode on on uh, signs and wonders. And uh, this is um, Peter, and this is my wife Deborah. We welcome you, and we thank you for welcoming you uh, for welcoming us into your homes. And uh, we'd like to, before we start, we'd like to open up in prayer. Would you like to do that? Yes, I just wanted to remind everybody we're uh, coming to you from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. so you can know where we're from, where we hail from. Um, and yes, I, I'd like to open in prayer. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, Father, we we thank you and we bless you and and we lift up your holy name today and Father, whoever this video uh, comes into contact with, whoever mm -hmm. listens to it, whatever time, Father, I pray that you would just give us ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart to discern and to understand the spirit today. And uh, Father, what it is that you're saying to your people mm -hmm. and what it is that you want to express through Peter and I. Lord, I, I know that your desire is to connect people all over this globe, people with like hearts and like minds, because you're gathering up a remnant in this time. You're gathering together your bride to make herself ready. And so, Father, I bless every single person that happens to turn this video on. And I pray that, God, they would um, watch it to the very end. And receive the, the love message that you have for each and every one of us, Lord. So we thank you and bless you. Now, Father, we just posture ourselves mm -hmm. and position ourselves at your feet, just like Mary did. We sit at your feet today. We back up into you, Jesus, and we sit down and we rest. And we receive from you today in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, why we're why we're doing this is we're, you know, we want to share our journey. Um, uh, I mean, we could share our journey from the very beginning, like when you know our childhood and stuff like that. But we really want to share our journey from a certain point of our lives as Christians, and when you know we really came to that understanding of who God was and who God is, and His love for us, and what that love has done for us how it's changed us and we want to share some of the wonderful testimonies that we've gone through and some of the signs and wonders we're going to be sharing some of those things we've caught some things on videos and we want to share those things with you and and you know they're 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 authentic they're they're real they're real encounters with god and and you know captured by camera which is you know sometimes it's a, it's an unusual thing but it's captured by camera but we want to share our our, our lives and we want to pour out our lives to you and we know that there are uh you know we're going to speak to two different parties today two or throughout the series uh you know the 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 party one party will be those who love god and hunger and thirst for god and know that there's more to god and we want to be able to share that more with you and hoping that in your journey you will be able to experience the things that Deborah and I have experienced and that it'll it'll drive you to even more of a hunger and thirst for him and a, wanting a more for him he's given you the more but it's up to us to search out what that more is and 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 mm -hmm. investigate we're investigating the the life of God we're investigating him in the sense of you know, he says he loves us. And so what we're doing is we're investigating that love and we're, we're seeing how much he does really love us and how he pours out on us. And so this is what we'll be, what we'll be doing. And, and, you know, we're hoping that, you know, I'm sure there are probably some people that will be listening to us that don't attend church, but are, are, are lovers of God and they don't have anywhere to go. But, you know, you can come here, at least you can come here and have a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a kindred spirit going here and we can talk to one another and you can write us, you know, we'll give you our email, you can write us and, and give us some comments or tell us some of your experiences 
or what you're lacking, what you feel you're lacking in your walk. And then there are those who have no hope and, and are hope deferred and, and, and you know, they're, they're, they're aimlessly walking around this planet with no purpose. And we want to be able to share the love of God with you that hopefully you will find purpose in your life through Christ Jesus and make Christ Jesus your Lord and Savior. We're hoping that, that because I'm telling you, before we, became, before we came to the Lord, before you came to the Lord, Deborah, and now there's such a, 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 a transformation that has taken place in your life. I have, I have witnessed it myself over the years because we've been together mm -hmm. for like almost 50 years mm -hmm. and you, you you wouldn't be able to tell it by us right but 50 years we'd be almost together 50 years and mm -hmm. and um but i've seen a transformation in your life and there's been some struggles there's been some hard times uh but god has filled god has filled our lives with the good times so this is our our what we want to do we want to share our journey with you and hopefully you will join us each time and share this, you know, comment, give us some comments so we can get back to you. And so we're going to begin where we sort of left off last time. Deborah, you want to you want to take us to that spot and we'll move on from there. Yeah, we shared in 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 the last um, video part of our journey and the reason that we're doing that. We we have so much more to share what the Lord has shared with us, but. We really felt that he wanted us to to share how we kind of got to this point um, for a reason. And and, you know, the number one reason is there are a lot of Christians in the world today. Many, 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 mm. many. If they were to be honest, we were two of them. And I know that we are not alone, that even though we were believers, even though we were born again and and filled with his spirit and you know walking with god and serving god we did not know we had a lack of identity we didn't know really what our true identity was was and the things that god started to show us after 25 years of being believers was taking us into a place to really understand the father's heart to mm -hmm. for for us mm -hmm. you know uh children we see the natural effects of when a child is fatherless my goodness the world north america is filled with single mothers and all you got to do and i'm sure that probably you know everybody on the planet knows somebody who is a single mother and knows the effect of the having the lack of a father in a child's life, or you may have a father physically in your life, but they don't know how to father. Father He's absent. Well, they're absent, or they're abusive, or yeah. so on and so forth because of their own uh, issues in their own lives. And so, we see the results today, even of a fatherless generation, and we see the results in church of even his own kids not really having much of an intimate relationship with the father we all you know have that relationship with jesus and we can relate to jesus i think a lot easier than we can relate to the father even though we talk about him we teach about him but there is a lack of revelation and and as we shared earlier on we had an encounter with that revelation of the father heart of god which set us on a brand new path and a desire and a hunger to know him more. May, may, may I give us just a, a, a picture? Mm -hmm. Think of a house, a home, uh, a, a father, a mother, and children. Good father and a good mother. Mm -hmm. um, and it's complete. But think of a home, a foster home. Now there's a mother and a father there, mm -hmm. but are they the same as your a real mother and father who really love you? They might love you in, in a certain way, but they can't love you as their own. And it's the church is like that. The church, a lot of the church is like where the church is a foster home and we're foster children. We don't have an identity. We have an identity crisis and we're looking for our, our identity, but we can't find them in that, that 
those foster well, parents because they're not our mother and father. And it's because we have, you know, a big problem in the body of Christ yes. today, and it's called an orphan spirit. Yes. So whether you have a mother or father physically or you don't, Absolutely. you can still have an orphan spirit like Absolutely. we did. We have physical mothers and fathers, but we still had that orphan spirit. And, and, and you know, and, we know the mm -hmm. scriptures that says God, you know, adopts us and all the rest of it. But until you really encounter yes. and experience that and know that down deep in your core Absolutely. belief system, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't affect a change or a transformation to the degree that God wants it That's to it. in your life. So this is why we're sharing the journey. And, and why did God do the things in our lives that he did why did he do it the way he did i really don't know i can't answer those questions other than i know he is good we're no more special than anybody else is we're no more favored than anybody else is although we're favored highly uh, as as are you and as is everyone else that that you know calls by his name that follows his name but god can do whatever he wants and you know one of the things we want to really share with people is that you know we have had God in a box for far too long and I really believe some of the things that God has done in the past number of years has been to stretch us as believers the church needs to be stretched because we have just kind of been like this going along for you know eons. centuries eons, eons. Time. And God says, it's time to stretch. You need to know that I'm way bigger than the, than the confines that you have put me in or tried to put me, or in. Tried to put me yes. in. And I said, I think in the last video, you know, the Lord said, tell my people, tell my children to stop putting me in boxes because I don't fit in anybody's box. God is infinite. We are finite. It, it's almost just natural for us. To, to try to fit things into boxes and package them and put a bow on them and make them nice and neat. And because that's our comfort zone and that's what we understand. But as spiritual beings, we need to get out of the box Absolutely. ourselves. We're, that's what he said to me. I'm not the one in the box. You are. You're in the box. <laughs> so it's time for us to break open our boxes and to get out of our boxes and to stop being so afraid of everything that God has for us. Oh, well, it might not be God, or it might be this, or it might be the devil. Well, you know, stretch your faith a little bit, just a little bit, and, and, and ask yourself the question, if I'm really asking the Holy Spirit, if I'm really seeking, knocking, and asking uh, God and the Holy Spirit to to lead me into all truth and understanding, which is what the scripture says, he leads us into all truth and understanding, then why am I so afraid at every turn if something is new or something is out of, you know, my, my frame of thinking? Why do I get so bent out of shape? And then I put everything back in the box and I still get frustrated. I still remain frustrated because every single one of you knows that there is more. You know that there is more to your spiritual walk to your Christian walk, that you're not, everybody knows that in the church. I don't think anybody would sit and say, oh, I've got it all. I've, I, arrived. I've arrived. I have reached, yeah. you know, the epitome of my spiritual insight to God. Of course not. You know, you would be the most proud person on the face of the earth. If you said that, that that's Satan's domain. That's his mantra. That's not our mantra. That's not what we profess and confess. And so, you know, Sometimes I think, God, are you doing this to stretch people's faith, to uh, break us out of those boxes? And so I'm going to continue because we don't want to, you know, keep it any longer. Peter, keep, keep me on time here. And we're going to do, you know, another, if we have to do another video, another two videos to get through this, we're, we're going to do that. We're not really doing a series. We're, we're just going to come on and share our heart and share the heart of the father as he shows us things. And so you know, last week, I think I ended up uh, cutting it off where, you know, we, we began to have visitations um, from an angel. And, and, you know, I talked about how we were hungering and thirsting. And we were asking God, like Moses did, Lord, show us your glory. We know inside there's more, but we don't know what it looks like. We don't, we don't know anything. And we're not even 
um, you know, we were not even uh, walking in that stream, if you want to call it that, where, where people had experienced those things before. Mm -hmm. And so he began to manifest himself to us. And the first thing that happened, and, and prior, uh, one year prior to that, uh, two pastor couples came to our church to do a prophetic weekend. And at the end of that weekend, they were ministering to the presbytery, to, um, the, leaders. to the leaders of which Peter and I were a part. And I remember, um, because we were struggling within ourselves with, with things in our own lives, not understanding, you know, spiritually certain things that were happening in our lives. And, and um, you know, we, we knew that God was showing us things, but, but it didn't, when we shared those things and dreams, you know, dreams and, and uh, burdens for prayer, but it, it, it was sort of met with kind of um, misunderstanding, I guess, or not quite understanding by, by people when we would try to talk these things out because we were looking for direction ourselves. And it was new to us. It was, it, it was, it was new, to, new us. to us. Yes. And so um, at the end of that weekend, the two couples uh, prayed for Peter and I prayed over us. And, and the one uh, prophetic man said to us, as soon as he started to pray for us, he said, he said, you guys are, are, are like deep space nine. He said, you, you hear things and see things so far in advance in the spirit that you're often misunderstood. Well, when he said that, it was like validation uh, to Peter and I, because we, we were like, yeah, that's exactly, um, that's exactly how we feel. And then, you know, when you don't understand, you, you're always asking yourself, what's wrong with me? What's, what's Peter and I all the time? Is there something wrong with us? Like, what is wrong with us? And people would say to us, what's wrong with you guys? Like, you know, why do you think there is something missing? And, and so it was like this validation came flooding through and he just proceeded to, you know, prophesy this wonderful prophecy over us too. And it was just the Lord in his goodness confirming to us that you guys are on the right track it's okay and what you're experiencing is absolutely of me when it came to the next couple um the the husband the pastor he stood up and all through this time he was sitting on the altar and he was just sort of you know going like this and looking kind of just at us looking like, at us like like and, and we're looking and thinking oh boy like yeah. i don't know that maybe this isn't going to be good but when it came his turn he jumped up he literally he jumped, jumped off the, the altar and came towards us and put his finger in our face and he said you folks are going to have a visitation no you're going to have two visitations within the next year from jesus and it's going to change your life, you're never going to be the same. It's going to trans, um, uh, not transport you, but transform, transform you. you. And and we were just jumping inside. So fast forward a year, almost to the day, was when that angel that we talked about in the last video uh, showed up and came into our room. And you know, I won't go through all of that again, except to say this: that angel came back. Uh, two more times in 30 days in the month of January he came back two more times so in a total of three times and always just you know this glory this gold dust this glory uh, and that's what the gold represents it represents the glory of God uh, God never does anything haphazard or random there there's always a method there's always a reason these signs that we experience and still experience to this day were impartations, uh, not just to us, but to the body at large, we would come to understand. And, and so he was just showing us and leading us into intimacy That's and it. into a place of rest and intimate worship and a whole different level with the father. And, and it was just, I can't even tell you for us, it was like, having, you know, a, a weight, such a heavy weight, like a boulder lifted off of our lives is what we were experiencing. And it was coming off more and more and more and more every day. And we were just getting more free 
and beginning to understand him more and understand ourselves more and understand his thought for us more. And it was just this wonderful return to a place of innocence really is what we were experiencing, returning to the place of innocence. And Jesus said, you know, if you don't become like a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. When we think about a little child, you know, when we watch our grandchildren or any little child, they're so full of wonder. They're so full of curiosity. They're so full of adventure. We have a granddaughter who, you know, her middle name is adventure. She just loves to go on adventures and kids love. That's why kids have such a great imagination because they are adventurous. They are so close to the heart of God. It hasn't been beat out of them. It hasn't been taught out of them. It hasn't been, you know, pushed out of them. It hasn't been spoken out of them that they're, they're not supposed to be that way. But God said, if you don't become like a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of God. We really need to take a hard look at that scripture to understand what that means, because it's all about the posture of a heart. That's it, it's heart. all about relationship mm -hmm. with our dad and with Jesus and with Holy Spirit. And, and if we want to enter the kingdom, do we just want to, you know, walk around with a Bible on our forehead and, 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 you know, quote the black and white and the red? Do we just want to do that? Or do we want to experience the, the living word? And live it. Like the Bible talks about the two edged sword. Do we want to live that? Or do we just want the black and the white of the print that we can quote? I don't. I, I had that for many years. I'm not interested. And I know now that there is more. We know now there is more. And so, you know, we knew when we started to have visitations uh, of, of from this angel with manifested presence, um, we knew that we were on the right path. And we knew our life was going to change. Well, we knew we weren't stopping. Yeah. And so from there, you know, that gold dust fell everywhere that we went for, for 30 days straight. It didn't stop. We, you know, whether we went to a coffee shop, whether we went to church, whether we went to wherever, it was falling. Peter would go to work. He would be covered in gold dust. He, it, it just, and for him, you know, we, we did not know what a seer was. We did not know all those, you know, nice terms that, that we understand now, but we didn't know anything back then. And so it was a learning process for all of us. So we started to, to learn. We started to read. We started to watch. We started to listen. We started to inquire um, uh, to other people of where there are other people that were experiencing the same things we were. And lo and behold, there were. There wasn't a lot, but there certainly, uh, you know, were people that were experiencing what we were in different parts of the globe. And so, you know, we started just to inquire, uh, uh, you know, Peter started to have like dreams upon dreams upon dreams upon dreams and his, his, his spiritual sight uh, started to become open and he was seeing things. Now, Bear in mind, how, I don't know, we're in, we're in, we're close to, he's already in his 50s, and I'm close to 50 when this is all happening. So uh, this is a brand new. Yeah, and we've been Christians for many, 25 many, plus many years back, back then. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, we're experiencing these wonderful things, but it's all very new to us. And, and of course, we're not just going into it blindly. We want the backing of the word. We want to be solid because, you know, we're, we're not flaky people. We weren't flaky people and we needed to have the, the, the word be our foundation for all of these things. And so we sought out even more in the word as things started to happen. And what, what was our eye, what was the eye opener for us was that the things that we were seeing in the spirit, <clears throat> the visions that we were getting in the spirit, the dreams we were getting in the spirit, they would come to, they would come to fruition. It would be like, you know, it's just a short time after you, we'd start seeing that dream played out. And it was like, but what it was, was God was getting our attention. See, that's why he was giving us the dreams and the, and the visions. I mean, and, and seeing them happen before eyes because 
he wanted to get our, our attention so that he could move on to bigger things or not, I can't say but, bigger but or let me better. Just, but let me just say this, as you're saying that, you know, we, we said we're like, you know, he was in his fifties and I was close to 50. Yeah. And, and we had had to, we've gone, we had gone through healing for years and years and years and years. We weren't ready to really step into the giftings that God had upon us to, to, to where we were at that point. Um, and, and I'll share a little bit more about that probably in another video, but God was preparing us. And mm -hmm. here's the thing, guys, we were yielding. Was yes. it easy? No. Oh my goodness. It just seemed like it went on forever and ever and ever and ever. And you ask yourself, you know, am I ever going to be rid of this baggage, this stuff? But we continued to pursue. We continue to do the work. Uh, and, and because we just really wanted more of God. And so, you know, when the fullness of time came for our lives, it started to take on a different look. And um, we were just like, our joy, the joy of the Lord returned to us because we had returned to our first love. Yes. We had gotten so busy working for God, striving for the approval of man all the time and not even really realizing what that was it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that those things were were uh, not important they were very important i mean you know we need to do good serving. acts and kind serving of serving god, we yes. need to serve god yeah but it was consuming us to the place where we forgot about god and it was all about ministry. It wasn't about relationship with God anymore. I wouldn't and say we forgot about God. I think, I think, uh, yeah, we, we got so busy yes. that we, Had neg less time, we, ne very little we time neglected yes. him. We didn't that, forget that about him, but we did neglect, yes, we did neglect, you know, our that time we, with him as do many yes. believers in yeah. church, because, you know, we put all the onus on serving God yes. and yes, we serve God. Absolutely. Um, but we were off balance. Let's just put it that way. We were, we were out of sync. We were not aligned. We were out of balance. And why? Because we were looking for identity. We were looking for our identity to be fulfilled, our purpose to be fulfilled by service. Mm -hmm. And that never is going to happen. No, it, it not for, it doesn't last. Let's put it to you this way. It might help for a little bit but it's not a lasting effect. And so, you know, as we continued this journey, um, a funny thing happened. People, as they started to hear about it, there were people whose hearts were really um, open and hungry like ours were. And people began to contact us and, invite us to their homes and and the most beautiful thing for me that still touches my heart more than anything else is that people would invite us over to their homes and they would it would be grandparents parents children of the, and, and, and children. grandchildren there would be sometimes four generations of people sitting around a living room with their mouths open like baby birds young and old wanting to hear the more what god wanting to hear the more wanting to be fed the more wanting to see the glory of god wanting to just see his face you know just to see his face wow it was so precious and you know we we had the honor and the privilege of praying and just blessing and you know we we didn't really we just wanted to we were spilling over with what god was putting into us and so we just wanted to bless other people um, with the same way, in the same way. And so, you know, I don't know where's my time, Peter. Am I, you is my time have, coming? You got seven minutes. Okay. And, and so, um, and then things just went on from there. We, we ended up not being, you know, we ended up backing away at that point from doing so much ministry because we really felt the spirit of the Lord tell us to come and to really press in and pursue him. 
And he did this several times over a year. And I remember one day, you know, the Lord said to me, because we, we had, you know, moved forward and then we had, you know, not followed through, move forward, not follow through. And we were still, you know, as busy as ever. And I remember the day the Lord said to me, Deborah, I've asked you several times to do this. I will not ask you again. And at that point, I sat up, literally, I straightened my spine and I responded out of my mouth. Yes, sir. And then he proceeded to say to me, it's a matter of life and death the life and death of your destiny. And I went, okay, Lord, you've got my attention. You've got my attention. And so we made, you know, we discussed it and we made, uh, um, we agreed that day that we were going to do what he had asked us to do. He had been really patient with us, but, you know, enough was enough. And, you know, he told us in no uncertain terms, this is what you're going to do. And so we, we stepped away from all ministry that we were involved with. And we began to just pursue God like never before. We soaked in his presence for hours at a time, hours and hours. And, you know, he continued to bring healing deep, deep, deep within us. And, and we began to see change in our own lives, change in our attitude, change in our way of thinking. As he began to lift things out and off of us that we didn't even know were there he began to reunite us as a couple he began to restore our marriage and and you know we invited people to join us to to just seek his presence we were not seeking god to do anything other than show up and fill us with more of him we just wanted to be with him and we invited other people that wanted the same thing and and so you know our little soaking group grew into we were busting at the seams in our home and um the lord told us you know i don't want you to pray for anybody i want you to just you know when you're soaking i want you just to go over and as a point of contact, I want you to lay your hands upon people. I'm going to do the ministry. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, did he do the ministry. Let me tell you, we would stand back and Peter and I would laugh at the end of every night. We would, we would literally laugh in, in wonder at what we saw taking place in people's lives. And we didn't even pray for anybody. It was the Holy Spirit transforming people and delivering people and healing people and i have to share this one precious night that we had and and you know we had known a, a couple who uh, uh the, the wife actually she she was a converted uh, she had converted from um uh the muslim religion and uh she asked one night could I bring, my mother's visiting, uh, visiting us from Iran. Would I be able to bring her to soaking? And my religious self went, oh, a Muslim in soaking? Oh, like I, I sincerely thought, oh, oh, gee, I don't know. Oh, should we do that? That's like, oh, we got to protect the presence of God. Like how silly. But that's how, those are some of the religious things that had to be broken off of us, the mindsets. And so, you know, we conferred and we went, uh, yeah, yeah okay, uh, all right, I guess. So there were three gals, sisters that came that night and brought their mother dressed in black with her veil. And um, they, they were soaking, they were sitting we on a couch. We, we had some worship. Yeah, and, worship. and I looked over at one point and there she was standing with her hands raised in the air and she couldn't speak. The only word in English she knew was thank you. And she was just in her own language. I believe she spoke Farsi. She was just worshiping her Allah. And she was a very devout Muslim woman, I might add. And for her to even be there was a big challenge. So 
she was worshiping God during worship and, and we were shocked. And then our daughter was there and, and she was, you know, she's a burden bearer and discerner. And she's like, literally comes over and she's shaking. And she said to us, mom and dad, what, what's the protocol here? I got to put my hands on that woman. I, uh, I'm going to explode if I don't pray for her. And I, Peter and I are looking at each other going, oh, I don't know. Well, I guess so. And she went over and she laid hands on this woman and she just started to pray in the spirit. She just started to pray in tongues and she was violently praying in tongues and she was crying and, and we're looking at the, the woman and she's crying. She's not just crying. She's sobbing. She is really weeping and, and her eyes are closed and, and her hands are in the air. And we're standing just looking at this phenomena take place. And then, you know, Kristen finished and she walked away and, you know, soaking went on. And when it was all over, um, the, the ladies, the, the sisters, we heard this commotion over on the couch and we looked to see what was going on. And, and the mother stood up and they turned her around and she had, it was like somebody had thrown a bucket of gold dust all down her back. Her black veil. Her black veil. And she couldn't see it. And so I had to take her to my bathroom because, you know, as a Muslim woman, she was not permitted to unveil in front of men or in the presence of men. I took her to my washroom and I took her veil off and I showed her she cried and she's thanking, she's thanking me, thanking me. And I said, don't thank me, thank him. And she was so moved and so touched. Well, what we heard afterwards, we didn't know it then, but a few days later, the next day, I think, the daughter phoned us and she said, I just have to tell you what happened. And she said, my mother, was praying and said, you know, she's very devout and she did not want to offend Allah. And she prayed to Allah before coming. And she said, if this Jesus is really who my daughters say he is, I need you to show me a sign because I do not want to offend you or go against you. And well, I think there, could there have been a greater sign? Could there have, could, uh, I mean, you asked for a sign. Wow, that's a sign. <laughs> I mean, hello. Yes, anyway, hello. it was just so, so precious. Romantic. Oh, it, it, was, was, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was. And that's just one. I could go through countless things uh, of, of things that happened. So God was just revealing things to us, like, like snapping your fingers. It was amazing. Anyway. I will continue on, but we're going to close this uh, this video because, like I said, I don't. We won't, we're trying really hard to keep it to about thirty minutes, um, and I could talk and we could talk forever. I could talk forever. And we'll just continue when but we we'll do an, when we do another video. We'll continue on from there, and maybe yeah. we can close in prayer and and uh, I can do that. Yeah, we can move on. So can Why? we, if you, you know, yes. everybody's okay with that? <laughs> we would just like to pray. Yes. A blessing, the blessing that, you know, God released over his people. And um, we hope that you were blessed with what you heard and there'll be more to come. Yes. And so, Lord, uh, Lord, we just come to you tonight and we just thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercies, oh God. Father, we know that we are in trying times today as 2022 is here and we're in, we're almost in march tomorrow will be march 1st that you know the world is in a, a spiraling downward position mm -hmm. and we pray though lord god as if it's has to spiral downward we pray that it would bring itself to its knees and then just call on you mm -hmm. And so tonight, Lord, we just thank you for those that were watching tonight and those that will be watching in the future this video. And we just want to say the Lord bless you, the Lord, and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and, and be gracious to you. The Lord mm -hmm. turn his face mm -hmm. toward you and give you 
shalom, peace, everything in its place, nothing missing, nothing broken. We pray this over the precious souls that are watching tonight. And we are saying this to you, dare, dare, mm -hmm. dare to ask God for the desires of your heart. Dare to ask him and see that he is not the one that will give you a stone when you ask for right. bread or when you ask for something else, a serpent, that he will give you the desires of your heart and show you the value of his love for you and that he will do mm -hmm. all things according to his promises and he can't even break his promises for you so that you can lead a successful and a fulfilling life in and through him and be a light to the world mm -hmm. we will see you next time bless you all bye everybody